Welcome back to the RS Links presentation from the PLC professor. This is part three. Uh, the last section went a little bit longer than we wanted. It went over 30 minutes, which means this one's going to be short. At least I think it will be. <clears throat> when we paused at the end of part two, we were talking about the one comport blues, a situation where purchasing or whoever didn't want to spend the money for a controller with two com ports. And now you want to plug in your laptop to monitor and debug, but you have to unplug the HMI because there's only one COM port. So there's a solution for that. And uh, let's also mention that you might only have one available USB port or no available USB ports on the computer. In other words, you have a USB port or ports, but they're all busy. Uh, this is a standard USB cable. Um, if you haven't seen one of these, I'd be shocked. And they call the flat, large one, the A connector, and the kind of square with beveled corners, the B connector. Okay, by now everybody knows what a USB hub is. This is a powered hub. You see a power adapter plugged into it. And it's four port, really it's... Uh, you can plug four devices into it and it expands one COM port, one USB port into four. Um, you're limited to 127 USB devices maximum in the bandwidth, of course, is limited. Hubs are very inexpensive. You can buy them on eBay or Amazon for four or five dollars. You might even find one for five dollars free shipping from China. Okay, here's the remedy. There's your laptop, it's got a USB port, no COM port, no RS-232 port, or the RS-232 is busy doing something else. Either way, you need USB. So you can use a 1747 UIC and then a 1747C13, and I show it plugged into the front of a Grace port interface on the door of the panel. Really that C13 um, is using the grace port as an interface to the 1761 CBLASO3, which plugs into the Net AIC module. So the Net AIC module is really what's going to split your port. And then you use a PMO2 standard MicroLogix cable to go to the Micro 1500, and then a PM05 to go from the net AIC to the panel view. So you've got your laptop and the panel view plugged in at the same time and you're using a splitter, if you want to call it that, the net AIC, plugged into the micro that only has one COM port. Okay, now we enter into a subject that's a real favorite for everyone. Who's on first? When to save, when to upload, or download? Okay, this, this is a graphic with a lot of details on it, and it's basically showing all possible locations for files. We'll just start up in the upper right-hand corner, server hard drive, probably connected by Ethernet to your PC. And your PC might have a floppy drive, uh, people don't use floppy drives anymore, but you may have a floppy drive and you may ba be backing up your files on the floppy drive. And of course you can back them up on a optical disc, CD drive, or DVD. Uh, the files might be on your hard drive, and of course there's going to be a copy of the program in RAM of the PLC. And if the PLC has a E squared PROM, then it probably has a copy of the working ladder file as well. So here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places where the program could reside simultaneously. I'm including RAM. So hard drive, RAM, floppy, optical drive, server, hard drive, and then in the PLC RAM and in the E squared PROM. So if you're going to do anything the primary consideration is what's in the PLC, what's on the hard drive of your laptop or your desktop, 
in watching RAM. Now, in another lecture in the PLC Professor series, I don't remember the lecture number, uh, but somewhere in there it talks about uh, Tale of Two Computers, I think is the name of the presentation. And basically the two computers, you're looking at them right here, the personal computer and the PLC. In that, um, we explain that there is no such thing as an online program. There is only offline program. When you download to the PLC, you're downloading machine level language that's been compiled or interpreted from the file that's on your hard drive or in RAM. So ladder logic is a figment of our imagination. Ladder logic does not exist in the PLC. When you're looking at ladder logic on your screen, you're looking at dead graphics that is animated with the data from the PLC RAM or from the RAM in your PC. If you're offline, then the database in the RAM of your personal computer is populating the fields and the state of the instructions in your ladder logic file. If you're online, then the uh, state of the bits and memory of the RAM and the PLC, they are animating the dead graphics of your ladder logic. If you're looking at ladder logic, you're looking at an offline project. If you see things changing and you're not changing them, then you're online and the data from the PLC is animating the graphics. So you always want to keep in mind um, which program you're looking at. Now, if your PLC supports online programming and you go in and you make some edits, you're editing it in the PLC. If you leave without uploading or saving it to the personal computer, then what's on your personal computer is different than what's in the PLC. So you um, go offline, you go to lunch, uh, you come back, and you get busy doing something else, so you take your laptop and you go to another project or another process to work on it. And the next day you come back, and uh, let's say when you were back in the shop or in your office, you made some changes to the program. So you come out there, now you have two files that don't match. What's in the PLC doesn't match what's in on your hard drive, and if you open up RS Logics, it doesn't match what's in the RAM. So do you upload or download? Well, you've actually created a problem for yourself. Uh, because if you can't remember the changes you made, and you didn't upload the changes you made in the PLC, you understand what I'm saying? You made changes in the PLC, didn't save them to the hard drive on the PC. Then you made changes from the hard drive in RAM to the program. Now you have two completely unique programs. There are changes in both, but not the same changes in both. So always be very careful that if you go online and you make changes that you upload. So you want to start with the correct program files. Now to save and download and back up program files, uh, besides uploading and saving, you can also um, initiate the PLC to save the working ladder file from the RAM of the PLC into the E squared prom of the PLC. And of course you can back up your program files on the optical drive, the floppy drive, hard drives on servers. Um, I typically to back I typically save everything to the hard drive on my PC then occasionally copy it to a server. Some companies have purchased a special piece of software from Rockwell that tracks everything and changes and knows where the latest is at. I can't think of the name of that program right off the top of my head. So when it comes to um, uploading, downloading, saving, and backing up, always know which program you're working with. Okay, uh, that was a short section, so good linksing. This is the end of part three of the presentation on RS Links. Hope you learned something. Uh, 
I fumbled a little bit here and there, stuttered and stammered. Had to start and stop it a few times. You might have heard a dog barking. Um, if you have any feedback, comments, suggestions, please um, comment on the YouTube channel. Thank you for your patience.